Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. For those of you who follow the channel, you know we haven't been real consistent uh, posting episodes lately, but we've been a little preoccupied. But today we got a great episode for you. See, we brought out this, this really neat old Winchester 1886 Ranch Rifle, set trigger, um, 4082 with a cut down barrel. And not only was it cut down, but it was cut down at a, a noticeable angle. So today we're going to take it out, see how, how it shoots, how accurate it is with this, this angled muzzle. And then we're going to take it back to the shop, put it on the lathe and true that muzzle up, take it back out and see if we improve the, the uh, accuracy of it. First off though, I'd really like to thank those of you for your thoughts and prayers as we went through this terrible wildfire. Um, you know, that, that darn thing, at one point we were told it was going to burn us over within 24 to 48 hours. And the next day, when they were expecting high winds, high temperatures, we just got an unseasonably cool, calm day. And the, those great firefighters got it wrapped up and got it stopped just before it got to the top of the ridge above us. And we're really feeling blessed. To, I mean, over the last couple of years, we've, we've had a lot of wildfire here. And three years ago, we had a fire come roaring right over that, that big mountain over there we call Slide Mountain came right up to the edge of us and then the next day the wind blew it back the other direction. Last year, the our fire started probably 20 miles to the south of us, burned right up to the other side of those rocks over there, right up onto our neighbors and we're, they were able to wrap it up. And then of course this one, 420,000 acres, traveled 34 miles this way from where it started and wrapped it up just before it got to us, it got over that rim and, and to us. So, you know, we're really feeling blessed and, and thanks so much for all the outpouring of uh, thoughts and prayers that uh, some of you viewers have, have been uh, sending us. So we're going to get back to business as usual and life as normal, we hope, and, and uh, start making some really good episodes for you again. So stick around. This will be a great one and we've got some more great ones planned for the future. So here's this old Winchester 1886 we're going to use for today's episode. This one uh, in 4082, although curiously it letters with a 4570, so I don't know if the barrel's been replaced or uh, if the factory records maybe were wrong, but the barrel's been on a long time it looks like, has, a, has kind of a similar condition to the rest of the gun. We talked a little bit about this one being a set trigger, and of course this one is a close coupled set trigger, so it's the later variety. Now the 86's came out originally with a single set trigger, and then later on in production went to this close coupled set trigger, kind of like what you find on the 92's and 94's fours this one's been well used but it hasn't been all beat up too badly and of course the worst thing about it is that it's it's had the the barrel cut off and and not very square but it has a surprisingly good bore so um that's really good for today's test uh, we're gonna we're not going to test out bore condition we're going to test out uh, the squareness of the muzzle okay so before we get started i'm going to take one shot um just at about 25 yards, just kind of get an idea where it's shooting, make sure everything's operating properly and whatnot. And about $5 a round for this 4082 ammo is the cheapest I could find it right now. Uh, I don't want to have to put a whole lot of shots through it to get it uh, sighted in. 4082 isn't one that I've ever loaded for, so at least when I get done with this, uh, I'll have some brass to work on. Now that, some of these videos get a little expensive to produce. One of the problems with uh, YouTube is, is they won't monetize shooting videos that aren't shot at a range. So um, some of what I do out here, of course, isn't at a range or most all of what I do here. So I can't monetize these videos. So they do get a little spendy at times. Just in ammo alone, much less time. But I sure have fun doing it. Okay, we're just going to put one on the board there and see where it, where it hits. Oh, let's go have a look. Okay, so we were a little low into the right on that test shot, so we adjusted the sights just a little bit, and uh, we moved back here. We're at about 80 yards now, and we'll, we'll set one up here and, and uh, or set one off here and see if we're on paper before we start wasting any of this uh, gold-plated ammo. Okay. Okay, let's see if we're on paper there. 
Ooh, we're pretty low. But for our purposes, the windage is pretty good, so this will give us an idea of how consistent it is. The nice thing is, is the test shot made a little round hole, so we knew at least it's stabilizing the bullet at 25 yards, and we'll see uh, when we get through, we'll put five through here and, and see how it does from this distance as far as stabilizing that bullet. This will be three. Number four. And number five. Okay, so let's see how it did down there. Maybe I can take a, a real quick gander here with the glasses. Huh. I don't think it did very well because I can only see the first shot um, which I know was was low and I'm not sure we were even on paper with any others okay so I think we can safely say that the accuracy of that rifle is pretty bad now we saw when when I glassed that first shot that it was on paper just barely on paper um, and, and I really thought the others would be close enough by that I wouldn't need a, a target half the size of this bank up here but as I walk back here I can see where it was hitting some high and some over to the right clear off the board up here above and, and to the right of it and of course this first one clear down here so I don't think we're going to have a tough time um, improving on accuracy by truing up that muzzle I think it, that thing is really not uh, shooting well and of course the the couple of shots we did take that were on the board are are good and round so it, we're not getting um, keyholes or anything but it is just not shooting accurately at all. For 80 yards, we shouldn't need a target bigger than uh, 12 foot or 12 inch square. Maybe 12 foot square would be more uh, appropriate for this gut rifle at this point. So let's get it down to the shop, get that muzzle squared up and, and see how she does when we bring it back up here. Now I really try to check these guns out pretty good before we get them out and shoot them for the first time. But obviously I missed something on this one. Um, the little pin and the tube hanger is not there. so. With each shot, that, that magazine tube was sliding out just a little bit further. You could probably see that on the camera as I was shooting, but I couldn't from behind. Probably would have figured it out if I hadn't been single loading and trying to um, cycle the gun. But uh, anyway, we're going to take this, this tube and barrel off anyway to uh, square it up. So um, we'll find us a, a pin to put back in that thing and make it right before we shoot it again. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the hardware off of this barrel and then get the barrel out of the gun so we can get it over the lathe. Now, usually I don't like uh, taking the sights off of a gun that's shooting really well and sighted in real well, but of course uh, this one really isn't an issue. We're going to have to get her sighted back in after we're done here anyway. So we drift that front side out left to right. Well, that one came out a little bit too easy. Um, we'll have to tighten that up again a little bit before we... Um, get her sighted in. Let's see, we'll go ahead and take this magazine tube spring out and follow her. Hopefully this one will come out alright. It's probably been in there for a while. Sometimes they can be a little obstinate. We'll turn it around here. There's a little tab there that holds it into a slot in the end of the barrel. And if you turn that up and give it a little tap with a nylon hammer that won't mar, then yeah, it's coming all right. Sometimes they'll just pop right out of there because of the spring tension. This one's taking a little bit of tapping to get it started. Come out of there. There we go. And there's a 
there's a rusty old spring there. We'll have to clean that up a little bit before we put it back in the gun. And hopefully we'll get a follower to come right out of there. Yep, and a little rust and whatnot. Okay, now we'll take this uh, four end cap off. And then usually we'd be at a point where we would take the pin out of that magazine tube hanger, but uh, of course we found out when we're shooting it, it doesn't have one in it, so there's a part we're going to have to find or make to replace. Now, this can this pro project can be done in the gun. Brownell sells a, a piloted cutter that you can turn by hand um, that does a pretty good job, but this one's so far out. Um, this seemed to me like the, the better choice since we have the equipment here um, to, to just take it over to the lathe and square it up real well that way rather than trying to grind and grind and grind with a cutter by hand out here and take it down that far. Cool. Now we're to the point where we want to pull this mag tube out. And of course we know that it came out pretty easy when we were firing it. There we go. And with this gun, I really would like to find a 26 inch barrel to put back in it. Um, find one with the, the same kind of patina that, that this one gun has and put it back to right. And since the letter's 4570, maybe that's what we ought to see if we can find one. Of course, most of you probably know this, but with, with the Winchesters, we have to uh, turn that, that magazine tube hanger 90 degrees to get it out of that that dovetail so here we go or we'll go the other way boy it's tight in there it's kind of buggered up i can see so that might be part of the problem here we go we're gonna have to do some refitting there it looks like it's not not fit in there properly and really kind of having a difficult time getting it to turn out there it goes yeah it is boogered up some so we'll clean that up a little bit now we can get the fore end off and there we go let's get it over to the uh the barrel vise and see if we can get that barrel off okay so we got all set up here with our barrel vise and uh, let's see how much trouble this barrel is going to give us coming off not bad at all just two pushes now you might notice some bluing tanks here behind me we just got lucky and, and I picked up a whole set of bluing tanks with actually some extra tanks stands and burners and all that pretty reasonably so keep an eye out for a future episode we're going to get that all cleaned up and, and get it into operation we'll have enough extra tanks we can do parkerizing and slow rust bluing and caustic bluing all in this one station Okay, so we've got this barrel off and indicated in on the lathe. Now we can take a look at just how far out of square this muzzle is. We'll rotate it around here and, and read on the dial face. We'll go, we start out at the low spot, we're climbing up, we're just about to the high spot here. And it looks like just a shade under 22 thousandths. Now to be honest, and looking at it from the side, I thought it was going to be more than that. But that's plenty when you're talking about the, the muzzle of a barrel and and squareness um, you can imagine the the effect that's going to have as that bullet exits that barrel um, and the gas is escaping from that low side and throwing off the trajectory of that uh, that particular bullet okay so let's get this barrel cleaned up and squared up and and see if it does us any good we're basically just doing a, a simple facing operation here we'll touch off um, we'll set our zero and then just clean it up until uh, we've got it all bright and shiny.
so we took a little bit off when we touched off and then we've taken about ten thousandths off so you can see where we're getting we'll see this uh low spot over here on this side we're going to have to get that all cleaned up so we'll keep on it going <laughs> still got a little bit to clean up over on this side here so we'll take another oh about two and a half thousandths off and see what that is. okay use the auto feed again so we make a nice smooth cut take as little off as I absolutely need to so I don't have to recut that groove for the uh, end cap on the magazine tube and shorten the tube up. Uh, I don't think it quite made it. So actually we were probably a little more than 22 thousandths. Yeah we still got just a hair out here to clean up. We'll go ahead and get that cleaned up um then we'll clean up the the rough edges here take the burrs off and whatnot and then we're going to age that back a little bit so that uh it looks right you know this bright shiny muzzle now isn't going to look quite right so we'll get all that done we'll get it back on the gun and let's see if it uh, shoots a little better than it did last time okay so we've polished and deburred this muzzle now um both on the inside and on the outside We've got just a couple of cosmetic things left to do. Um, of course, we want to want to add a little color to this. It looks all bright and shiny like this. It isn't going to look quite right on a gun with that much um, patina on it. So we'll age age that metal back. The other thing is on a gun with this much wear, you know, the the edges are rounded off a little bit. And we we touched this right down to where we left just a slight rounding on three of the flats and the other ones are just have razor sharp edges so we're going to go back and round those off just a little bit to make it look right now we're not trying to fool anybody to think that this is original because this is like a 22 and three quarter inch barrel where they had cut it off so it's just that we want to make the gun look um as right as possible and not have this just shiny muzzle sticking out well it took just a shade under 25 thousandths to clean and, and square this muzzle up. And we've taken and uh, rolled these edges and corners a little bit uh, just to make it look right and, and uh, color matched and aged the, the muzzle a little bit so that it wouldn't blind you from the shine when we polished it all up and whatnot. So I guess now it's just time to put this old rifle back together and see if she's gonna shoot any better now with a square muzzle. Now you might have noticed a little change in scenery today. We went back to where we were shooting yesterday and. Uh, most of the herd was kind of milling around that area, so 
Rather than spend the rest of the afternoon butchering a cow that might have got hit with a ricochet, we've moved to a little different spot, but we'll shoot from about the same distance just to make it fair. Um, we're going to take one shot, hopefully just one or maybe a couple, just to kind of see where we're at because I just tapped these sights on in the shop and eyeballed them in. I think they're pretty close, but we're going to see. Okay, the moment of truth. See if this uh, thing's going to shoot better. Wow! Well, that's fantastic. That that one's just a little bit high and just a little bit right of the bullseye. Um, couldn't be happier with that. There's no reason to burn another round there. Let's uh, let's move back and see if we can group this thing up now. Okay, so I've got to admit, I'm pretty happy with where that first shot hit, considering I just kind of eyeballed those sights back on after um, we had that barrel in the lathe. Let's, uh, let's see if we can't put together a, a group now. Let's get some glasses on. Okay, here we go. Boy, gotta like that. <laughs> Hopefully we can put a, about five of them right there like that. I like it. Okay, here's the next one. Send her home. Oh yeah. We like it. Better, better check that bag tube, make sure it's staying put. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, three more. Let's just send them down range because we know we're we're uh, getting close now. <laughs> what a massive improvement over what this thing was shooting like with that muzzle all screwed up. Okay, here we go with number three. Oh heck with it. We'll just we'll just beat these last two down there and then we'll go see how we did. Oh, there we got a little bit of a flyer on that one. That's all right. And one more. Let's see how we can do with this last round. Uh oh. There we go. Okay. Round number five. Okay, let's go down and see what kind of group we made. Well, I'm not ready to call it a tack driver yet, and I probably won't take it on my muley hunt this fall. But as you can see, this was a vast improvement over what it was with that uh, barrel at such a bad angle. Um, you, you can see how important keeping that barrel, uh, that muzzle in good shape is. So if you've got any muzzle damage, get her cleaned up. It makes a heck of a difference. Um, you know, with a little load development, this probably could be a good shooting old rifle. It'll be even better if I find that, uh, that 4570 barrel that should be on that thing. If everybody knows where there is one, I'm in the market. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I sure did. Thanks for joining us, and uh, until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.